Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Naomi is a character that was created only a few short years ago in 2019 from Brian Michael Bendis, who mm. is a veteran of creating young, teenaged uh, people of color in comic books that are regarded as either a huge success or a colossal failure, both of which are still made into media empires, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> like Miles Morales, everyone loves him. Riri Williams, you're still getting a show on Disney Plus. <laughs> they use tricky tactics to get you to do it, like this cover. Yes, this cover uh, is uh, just, just, it's one of those things, man. And uh, DC's really good at it in terms of they do it a lot, where like <laughs> even Watchmen will have a cover that has like the cast of that film that is incredibly divisive on the cover <laughs> of the most seminal graphic novel of all time. Bendis and David F. Walker are credited as the writing component of the creators of Naomi, along with Jamal Campbell's art on the first volume, which is just, just next level dope. Jamal Campbell's art is friggin' awesome. If you have the chance to buy a Jamal Campbell drawn book, you will not be disappointed, uh -huh. regardless of whatever the narrative is. <laughs> it's dope. Uh, and David F. Walker is a fun creator that doesn't get nearly as much representation on this couch as he should, and I apologize, but, you know, that's just how it goes. Naomi could have been created at Boom Studios, or Image, or mm. Dark Horse, or Marvel, or whatever, and, it's, and there would be no difference outside of the find replace option on his word processing program, because like, it doesn't matter what aliens it oh, is. Oh, so it, it's, what, we're doing like cosmic stuff kinda, here? Kinda, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, multiversal cosmic. Oh. Yeah, it's unnecessarily what? complicated. I don't need multiversal cosmic. No, 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 but cosmic it needs is to, just enough. It needs to be like extra complicated, like just another layer. Otherwise it's just obvious I'm doing Superman and it's like, just do Superman. No, no one will blame you for doing like a subversive modern take on Superman. Everyone does it. Naomi also comes on the heels of Bendis being like, I'm gonna set the whole goddamn publishing house on fire. I got Superman doing something else. I'm changing up John Kent and I'm creating an imprint because DC is like, oh, you got an imprint? Well, we'll let it float around for a couple of, mo a couple of years and then delete it. <laughs> and that's Wonder Comics. And Wonder Comics was an imprint at the same, at, at, at a time when DC was just like, yeah, imprint, 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 yes, yes, yes. Like, they were like, yeah, Vertigo's back. And then like two years later, they're like, Vertigo's canceled. And then they went, how about uh, Black Label? Fuck that. <laughs> like, almost in the same breath. Yep. And Wonder Comics and Young Animal. Like, what are you I doing? I forgot about Young Animal. Young it, rawr. <laughs> Gerard Way, friggin' Black Parade is like, how about an imprint? And they're like, what? as long as Gerard Way's writing it, I don't give a shit what you call it. And then they went, oh, uh, Stop. That's Wonder, enough. Wonder Comics was like Bendis's, I'm a dad and I have kids and I would like to create a kind of like all ages, teen oriented, young adult imprint that's also still in continuity, but is like, it has like an ear towards like the youth. Like Teen Titans? Yeah, which he does <laughs> start writing. Oh. It's but, called Young Justice. He launches Young Justice, Naomi, Dial H for Hero, The Wonder Twins, just a whole bunch of books that all got canceled. Mm. And uh, Naomi at least finished its six issue run before it disappeared off the face of the earth for, th for three years because they were Ooh. like, well, we want to, <laughs> There's, like I said, it's called season one because they're like, let's develop this into a show. Right. This is just a, this is a, it's a Big, pitch. It's a beautiful storyboarded <laughs> pitch book for the CW, which ironically, of the timing of this taping, uh, the CW is on the chopping block for Warner Brothers. They're thinking about canceling, selling, dissolving all of CW entirely because apparently the CW has never turned a profit. <laughs> What? Shocked face. I love that on the cover, they're like celebrating the fact that it is gonna be a hit show on the CW. I mean, if it's not gonna be on the CW, where could it possibly be? I mean, it could Other go than to HBO Max. HBO Max, it could've gone on DC Universe back in the day. Mm. Uh, but yeah. DC Universe, what's that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> like it's imprints, a, a, a trillion dollar app that was created for DC Entertainment uh, completely imploded after HBO Max was created. So the reason why I even bring up the fact that it's a show, and it, because I think it's intrinsically connected to my own speculation about why Bendis left Marvel in the first place, mm. which is like when Marvel, when Bendis was working at Marvel, you know, he was the big cheese, the head honcho, the top right. dog. Yeah. 
in terms of being the creator, he wasn't in any way like an executive right. he, or he was just like the biggest name, the biggest they had name at Marvel. And he was like constantly putting shit out. Yeah, and he could throw his weight around, and he could like yeah. dictate the entire line, even though he wasn't an editor. He would use his middle. I am Brian Michael, Michael Bendis. Bendis. I don't know if you know this, and uh, but but he was also used when Marvel Studios was not owned by Disney as a member of the like brain trust to kind of like shepherd the characters, be like, oh, you can't just have Iron Man do this, that, and the other thing. Like, he, he has to be true to the character. Obviously, after the acquisition, that entire trust was dissolved, and they were like, what the fuck are these not TV or movie people doing here? Get them the hell out of here. <laughs> right. Dissolve the brain trust entirely, which put Bendis back from being top writer and also in movies and stuff to being the top writer at Marvel whose best work was like a couple of years ago. Mm. And so he's like, uh-oh. And I think that there was like a dialogue and he was poached slash negotiated through DC to be acquired from DC. Or he smelled the from Marvel, in the water. Smelled the bubble in the water. <laughs> and knew because Jeff Johns was also a top writer at DC and also worked his way through the corporation into working in the movie arm of the DC universe. Now he also worked in movies as well, but like yeah. he was he was able to toe that line of being like, I work in right. comics and I work in movies and TV. Ben is like, holy shit. Right, oh, they're letting the comics people do movie stuff? Oh, That's they don't do that be, here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they threw us out of the room. Yeah, because I can't do like lateral moves anymore. It's only it's only gotta be up. Yeah. And so when he went and to And DC's movies have been huge recently, right? <laughs> They've been fantastic. Well, well, the I, problem is they're so bad that there's <laughs> no anyone can work from them. There's no one in charge. Right. Because like anyone who was in charge, uh, <laughs> their star fell rather rapidly. This is true. And it creates a power vacuum. Well, I, I could jump right in there. It could be <laughs> I think it was a I little like bit of idea. column A and column B. Like I think in that particular case it was like I see the potential of the DC Cinematic Universe, mm. as opposed to, oh, it's all imploded, <laughs> so I'll just slip in and fix it. I right. think I think he would Maybe not want the job of fixing point. it, yeah. which yeah. is why he's making CW shows and not like stepping up to be the Feige of the DC Cinematic Universe. But I, I think that Naomi is a representation of him being like, yeah, Naomi could have been a Marvel character. Yeah, I got a show. Here's but one. like, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not making a friggin' show for Marvel, and I'm not gonna also be like a producer or you know a director. This is the result. Right. It's this middling show on CW <laughs> that will be canceled after half a season. The book got canceled after half a run. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, the, the book didn't get canceled. There's a big, there's a big difference. Right. This they is just, a designed as a six issue run, right? Yeah. They they kept saying there was gonna be more. Oh. And there just never was any. Right. And well, literally, season two is coming out this March. Oh. Okay. There you go. Season two of the comic book series. Yeah, right. after three years. After three years. What was the production history of this show? Was it going to go into production at like oh, the pandemic been... and then it just got Well, the fact delayed? that this, sh this, this book. Because this 2019, right? Yeah, this book debuted in 2019. 2020. Maybe they had to wait. Yeah. Or maybe they were working on it halfway. Because maybe it was gonna be like, uh, first season of the book, first season of the show, second season of the book, second season of the show, and then the, just the, the first season of the show got delayed so much yeah. that like, the second season of the book couldn't come out. Well, and I don't need the social distance to make comic books, so like Naomi as a character continued. Right. Of course, the only people who used her was Bendis, because Bendis was writing Young Justice and was like, uh, Naomi's on Young Justice. Yeah, oh, and don't then, forget, she exists. And then Young Justice got canceled, and he's like, uh, well, I'm still writing Justice League, so Naomi's on the Justice League now. And I'm like, dude. Like, I appreciate it. It's your character. I know you gotta, you get, you gotta, you gotta protect your own. But like, come on, man. Take the cucumber out of your pants. <laughs> so this book, Naomi, season one, introduces Naomi's world of Port Oswego, which is a fictitious town in the Pacific Northwest, which is where Bendis is from. Now, huh. th this book is not autobiographical because it's about fantastical characters from alternate dimensions and planets and stuff. But like about like a couple from the Pacific Northwest who adopt at least one kid. In Bendis' case, he has a couple of kids that he's adopted, but like in this book, it's only the one, it's Naomi, but it's a person of color. I think his daughter is an African-American girl. And so he's like, hey, like I wanna, and I think the idea was, and, and, and it all comes from a pure place. Like despite all the corporate shit we talked about, right. about Bendis' like business maneuvers, which like you, I, I say it derisively, but like that's how the business works. Yeah, you're in the entertainment business. I get it. And also, like, if you don't, you're just gonna be eaten alive or discarded. So you might as well make the big moves. Mm. But at the core of it is this attempt to tell a story about a girl who's adopted, who is extraordinary, 
and to provide this kind of like normalized story in a big bombastic DC universe that a person who doesn't feel like they belong or doesn't feel like they're part of the norm can attach themselves to and feel like they belong. And that's, yay, there's something pure and good about that. Nice, you know, well, upvote for you. You're right, that is Superman. And that's Superman because Superman is like an adopted child of a doomed planet who was raised by a kindly couple and then like found their inner strength and uh, place of belonging and purpose. Right. And while feels out of place, has made a place for himself. Exactly. Right. And well, we've told that story enough fucking times, maybe we can just do it a little different. Now. Well, how about we do it exactly the same way, but with a different character and yeah. make it make it like deliberately complicated because I need to just control F and change a couple of, like let me just write the Superman origin and then go like, oh, uh, what if it wasn't this, it was this? but it wouldn't make any sense and it's like actually really complicated now that I've written myself into this corner by issue three, uh-oh. Uh, I'll just try to like dump a whole bunch of exposition so it doesn't like bore the reader and also overly complicate my narrative even though I'm already like overly complicated. Or sell the fact that like I literally just copied and pasted a Superman story. I mean like, and I don't blame you for doing Superman. Superman's like the most pure superhero origin of all time. It's the yeah, Moses parable. Kind of like forms many other superhero origins exactly. that came after. Yeah. So you, you could do worse. You could be like, yeah. I'm gonna rip off Sleepwalker's origin or Booster Ooh. Gold's origin. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Stick with the big leagues. <laughs> but, uh, but he already did Spider-Man. So how about Superman now? Right. So we see the people of Port Oswego and they are being uh, interviewed or whatever about <laughs> the goings on of a 17 second Superman battle that crash landed in the middle of their sleepy Pacific Northwestern town. Okay. Now. Bendis. Did this happen? No. Okay. I mean, well, here's the thing. It's Bendis, so I dropped off Superman oh, after a certain so point. Like maybe. So it very easily could have or not. It's Bendis. So, like, Bendis was writing Superman, so I'll bet he shoehorned in a moment where this happened because he also, for no reason, keeps using Mongol. <laughs> and Mongol is the and fight. And Mongol is the fight. Yeah. But also it's Bendis, so he could have just been like, fuck you, who cares? And just well, put this in here for Yeah, no if you reason. just put right. it at the beginning, like, I'm sure it happens all the time. There's tons of stuff well, that Superman does that doesn't, yeah, doesn't make doesn't the fight Mongol every day. And though. that's the thing, yeah. is that like, any, it could have been Metallo, it could have been Lex Luthor in a power suit, it could have been Brainiac. And, <laughs> I really like drawing Mongol. But, it, but it's, it's, it's just, it's always Mongol, and I don't understand. And it's like, Mongol is so specific a character, and he is, he's like so rarely on Earth. Yeah, what what's he even doing here? What are you even doing here, man? You have War World. The last time I saw you set foot on Earth, there were two stories before that. I know you read both of them. It was the Alan Moore one with the freaking Black Mercy. <laughs> and it was the death of Superman. Yeah, those are the two I know. <laughs> those are the two. <laughs> and he doesn't reference either of them. So Superman and Mongol, like, it, it's just like classic sleepy Pacific Northwestern town. Hum de ho, I got my, you know, I got, I'm riding my unicycle, I'm, I'm brushing my mustache, and then <laughs> boom, boom yeah. big Superman fight, blah, 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 and then gone. Yeah. And that's it, and everyone's just like. <laughs> so, it's really fun. Uh, it also indicates that Naomi, who is this normal, average teen, who is the daughter of two uh, locals, mm -hmm. seemingly, uh, she is a big Superman fan. She loves Superman. Mm. Uh, and her therapist suggests that it's because she has a Superman complex. Now, what? Okay, so like one of these things is like, I appreciate when like you create, you know, like in-universe <laughs> world building terms. Right, like but, in, in okay. the, the DC universe, that's a thing that therapists like invented. Yes. It's like a Jesus complex, but, I, but, but for Superman. DC, yeah. Except that like in the real world, the Superman complex is a thing true and it's about like narcissists <laughs> yeah and it's like that's not what this is now if the therapist had said now i understand you probably think like but in but unofficially we use the term superman complex to mean other things and it's yeah. for people who are adopted who are looking mm -hmm. for like a greater belonging and that's why like they they, they attach themselves to superman because they know he's adopted mm -hmm. and i'm like how do you know though Maybe they mean adopted by Earth. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, adopted not in the literal sense, because no, I wouldn't know, but like right. adopted by all of humanity. No, but as like our, they talk very hero. familiarly about Superman, and I don't recall. I don't, I don't think this came out before Has Superman, Superman had already out outed his identity. Right. 
I was gonna say, has he ever revealed that he was raised? I'm sure there by... is one or two issues out there, or maybe even a thousand issues. Just like out a there. press conference. Yeah, and like... he's like, "Well, my adopted parents, or something yeah. like that." And like, you're adopted too. Like, <laughs> he uh, Superman has actually said out loud that he's weak to lead. So like, I'm sure he said <laughs> that he's adopted. But like, he's just he just just lets everyone know all his secrets. all his weaknesses. Oh, well, yeah. that's how I get all you the to ways trust you can me. Get him. Yeah. But at the same by time, by the way, Chris like... and I will kill me. <laughs> no one has any on there, and the press. Just... Yeah, and you can make it. Have it, do you? Or you can, you know, put it into a gas. Yeah. Like, it all works. These are just some ideas. I'm sure that he has said that he's adopted before. He certainly referred to Earth as his adopted home world. Right. But these guys talk about it like they know that Clark Kent was adopted Right, by there were, like, the papers and everything. Yeah. It was official. <laughs> yeah, Does, except it wasn't. Except because it definitely there's no was not. <laughs> Does Superman ever talk about being a young boy on Earth? No. He does talk about how he's ra he, like people talk when, when people refer to him as an alien and stuff. He's like, look, I was raised. Here. I was raised, yeah. I wasn't always like that. I didn't come here fully grown <laughs> in this outfit. Like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't come here for conquest. I was born yeah. here. Like I popped I'm my first boner on this yeah. planet. Like trust me. The yeah. next National Enquirer article: Superman raised by wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi missed the big the big fight. She was not oh. there when it happened, and she's like, damn it. And her friend Annabelle is like, ah, and she keeps her up to speed. Naomi works at this like sleepy diner. Uh, she does a lot of searching on the internet for any news about like what happened. Cause like Superman mm -hmm. and Mongol fought. Right. What was that all about? What was that all about? Yeah. What's the context for this fight? No. What happened? Nobody yeah. knows. Did they mention our town? Right. Yeah. Is and she a huge fan of Lois Lane? She should be. She's not. She, I don't think she even says any Superman characters names in this entire run outside of Superman. So no. Uh, but I really like the idea of this like sleepy town being just completely uprooted by the super shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when they leave, you know, they smash all this stuff, and they're like, "Is he coming back to clean Is this? Is he gonna fix this? <laughs> Is he gonna use that like vision he has that like repairs things from that movie?" Uh, he doesn't That's remember not canon. <laughs> where he was. <laughs> Your town is so sleepy, he's like, I don't know where. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I crashed he's like into flying town. by, he's like, ah, oh, look, I don't have time to <laughs> strafe the whole goddamn country looking for where, yeah. I, where I took a like, shit. I crashed Do you know a how lot many things okay. we bounce into in that fight? Yeah. Yeah. Like doom, 37. Doom, doom. It was like skipping a stone. Sorry, doesn't the government have some kind of program yeah. or something for fixing this stuff? <laughs> right, uh, call uh, should be like a fun Star Labs. Oh, they, they call Star Labs. This is a freaking research institute. <laughs> we don't clean shit up. We're not damage control. What's that? Oh, I don't know. So <laughs> while she's work, while she's not working, while she's mm. sitting at the sleepy diner, uh, she gets a text. He's back. Superman logo. Oh, she's like, oh shit. And her boss is like. Be back in five minutes. Like, go. <laughs> There's nobody here. Yeah. So she runs out, and Superman is there, and he's cleaning up. Oh, he is cleaning up. All right. And we get a couple of fun shots of Superman just fixing things up. Annabelle's there, and she took a few pictures and stuff. Uh, Naomi arrives, and he's gone. She missed him. What? Missed him again. What? He cleaned up that fast? Yeah. He's Superman. Yeah. Well, he's Superman. He did it super fast. Right. Yeah. Maybe he used that vision thing you were talking about. <laughs> If he By left the way, a hole in the ground, like... You have to, like, fix all the pipes it. and shit. That vision thing is the result of them running out of money in that movie. And they went, oh, we can't actually film him fixing it. So they just reversed <laughs> the footage yep. of it breaking and a different shot of him looking and just made a story <laughs> using editing. Nice. It's not a power of his. Cellophane S, you had to make one. That's a power. <laughs> that was designed in the script as a power. I don't know why. The it's lame. thing was not. It's stupid. So Bendis introduces you to like a dozen characters. Who that, all see Superman. Well, that are all friends with Naomi. Right. And it doesn't matter who any of them are except for Annabelle. Like, I really can't stress that enough. I mean, they're fun and they're interesting looking because right. Jamal Campbell drew them, but like, Annabelle is the main two, character. Maybe in oh, season I hope two they'll so. show they'll like their own little I hope so. It's like high school. You meet all these people and you hang you out with remember them. like three of them. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes you spend a lot of time with one of them and then like you don't see them for a while and then you go spend time with the yeah, other yeah, one yeah, for yeah, yeah. a while. Yeah. That's not how that comic books yet, work but... with, with high school. High school it's like, no, you'll marry that person. <laughs> so, you know, Naomi bumps into Annabelle and their goth friend who's who was originally like Superman, pff, lame. And mm -hmm. she's there, she saw him like clean up and smile at her and leave and she's like, Okay, he's awesome. 
<laughs> I completely get it now. And I really like that because it just cracks through her facade of being right. this like edgy teen who doesn't give a shit about anything. Who we isn't into Sandman? Him. Yeah. If well, you're God Sandman, in the DC universe. Yeah, you read you be Sandman. Into Sandman. If Sandman's real in that universe, you don't know that's a thing. <laughs> you know, you, you, you don't have a death poster on your wall in the DC you universe. You should. You don't know what she looks like. She's invisible in the real DC universe. I, I don't know. Yeah. She like, sweet Morpheus be praised. Superman's amazing. That'd be we amazing. She's a Constantine fan. Yeah. People know about him, right? Or do they know about do him? Do they? I don't know. I mean, he's he's, kind of, he's yes. not goth, he's just an asshole. Yeah. yeah it's, and yeah. British. And British. But yes. And brooding. He's on the Justly Dark. If anything, she'd yeah, be a Zatanna fan. Oh, there you go. Naomi's sad. She goes to her therapist. Her therapist says that, you know, you, you're obsessed with Superman because of the Superman complex, not the real one, the fake one in the DC universe. Right. And I uh, mean, in their universe, they already had a Superman complex, and someone's like, you think you're a Superman, like you're better than everyone. Right. You're like, we already have a complex for that name. Well, I, I can imagine- You're just a narcissist. That, yeah, we have different words for that. Uh, <laughs> but the Superman complex, I can see that being like, yeah, you think you're better than everybody else. It's like, that's not Superman. Like, Superman right. does not think he's better than everybody else. That would be a different complex. Right, that'd be a Lex yeah, Luthor, Luthor, Luthor complex. Luthor complex, <laughs> yes. We renamed it. Yeah, there you go. That's that's one for you, Bendis, you can keep that. It's okay, but dude. Lex Luthor is better than everyone else. He's like a super genius. He, okay, no. <laughs> Fuck Lex Luthor, he sucks. I agree, he sucks. He, he is not better than everybody else. He is smarter than everybody else, and he's richer than everybody else. Right. That does not give him license to think or act like he's better than anybody. He has money, he has intelligence. Lex Luthor uses it for the benefit of himself and for the destruction of Superman, <laughs> who's actually a benefit for mankind. No. Fuck Lex Luthor. So the kids, you know, they do their kid thing because it's written by a 50 year old white man and uh, yeah. these kids, they're, they're kidding it up. What does that mean? They what mean, do they do? You know, they're, they're hanging out in the park. Oh. All being distinctly individual, hanging out while the sun sets and they're just throwing rocks and looking oh, at their phones. I'm like, what are these objects? They're rocks. They're rocks. Okay. They're just, just whipping yeah. rocks. I mean, I threw rocks. I threw rocks, yeah. Yeah. At cars. What? <laughs> I'm making a joke about like how it's like, if it's a teenager, it's like, what are you probably doing? You're probably like breaking something, vandalizing something, or jerking off. Like it's not that you're like purely, ah, I'm just outside. It's so beautiful out here. Look at the sunset. Just, just, I'm being young and enjoying the youth and privilege of my body. Like, right. no, you're not. What are you doing? You get oh, I'm lighting these matches and yeah. I'm throwing into this pile of leaves. <laughs> That's what you're Why doing. Why would you do that? I don't know. Oh. Whoosh. Ooh, it's time to run away. Now I run in the other direction. <laughs> so anyway, the kids are talking, and the reason why they're talking is because everyone talks in this book, and everyone provides exposition. But well, it's like, a Bendis book. So yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But like, this is like I don't know. This is next like, level. Next, this is Spinal Tap level, uh, Bendis, <laughs> where we go up to eleven on the exposition and dialogue. Are are they like really figuring themselves out? No, no. I, I'm very disappointed. It's not like exploring these kids just being kids. You know, you read Ultimate Spider-Man, you, you know who Peter Parker is like from a molecular level. Mm -hmm. uh, with these kids, they're like, ah, Superman's pretty cool. And the goth chick actually makes a funny comment where she's like, well, now I'm being ostracized by my fellow myth misanthropes because I like Superman now. And they're like, <laughs> It's like, yeah, well, you didn't see him. So you, you weren't completely, you didn't get like a revelation. Right. But I like that she, but unlike a teenager, she's just like, I mean, that's how it works. And it's like, no. <laughs> She'd be like, this is who I am now. I am I am destroyed as a human being because it's this small niche group of people rejected me. Yeah. I have to buy new clothes. clothes. I gotta change my whole thing. <laughs> but like I'm not necessarily arguing I mean, this is supposed to be a book for kids to feel like they belong. I wouldn't give like an accurate portrayal of what teenagers are like. Well, it no. would be scary. <laughs> not only that, but no, you're seeing all of these different people interacting with each other. Yeah. They can all be different and still be friends. Exactly. Well, she's got this, yeah, she's got this other group of people, so she doesn't need to get all upset about, it's, it's like teaching you, like yeah. this is how, if you get rejected by this group, who cares? Find these other people who appreciate you for who you are. There you go. Yeah. So they talk about how this isn't the first time there was a, like they speculate about how there, this was the first time a super thing ever happened, but they're like, actually, this isn't the first time. Like there was another time that there was like a super thing that happened in this town. Oh. And then was like, oh, maybe that's the thing that makes me special is that that thing happened. And then so she investigates and it's just, it's very what? flimsy. It's very flimsy. Does she remember that something happened? No, she doesn't. Naomi wants to belong. She is an adopted kid. She's from another place. Making you different than everyone else mm -hmm. doesn't make you belong. No, but she believes or wants to believe 
that she's special. Right. That's why her therapist is like chiding her about having a Superman complex because it's like you're adopted and you want to have a greater meaning and be special. Like there's nothing wrong with that. No, but like let's investigate this other super thing and why isn't anybody talking about it? And how does it, what does that do with me? That's the most teenager thing in this. Why book. would it have anything to do with you? Because she's egocentric. Because she's a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> so she asks a bunch of random, very distinct looking characters mm. about the, the super thing that happened a while ago, and all of them just go, no. Passively, actively, or suspiciously, everyone's like, nope. No recollection. No recollection. No recollection, and no, like, if there was something, we would be to we'd still be talking about it today. So where did she get this information from? Yeah, who did have Some it? teenagers. They told her, like, I heard a rumor that there was a thing that happened uh, like a while a, ago. It's like an underground... Yeah, like, like, there's a thing. ...secret thing that only a few people well, talk now, about or know Well, now that people vehemently deny that it ever happened, it must be proof positive that it did. Right. So she's it's wandering around town, exactly, and she's yeah. looking at all these very distinct-looking Pacific Northwesterners, as <laughs> you can clearly tell. Yeah. Uh, and, then she she, and then she notices the town mechanic, D. His name's D. Like the letter D or D E E, but sure. D is there, and he looks like a fucking space alien because he is one. But they don't think that; they just think he's inhumanly huge. <laughs> now, in the TV show, he's a tattoo artist, but who cares? Uh, and I believe that's because he has tattoos. Really? TV fart. But <laughs> what well, we got someone that has a lot of tattoos. Yeah, you're a tattoo artist. Uh, we don't want to build a mechanic set. Uh, it's yep. way easier to do a tattoo parlor. Yeah. Ironically, the tattoo parlor is in like a mechanic set. Yeah. What? So it's just a disaster. Here's the so, thing. Well, never mind. I work on cars and I tattoo people. Mm -hmm. I use engine oil as my ink. Yeah. It's dirty. <laughs> That's gross. And it'll kill you. <laughs> it'll kill you eventually. That is so, toxic. But, but <laughs> D is the town mechanic and he's like an outsider. And he's looking suspiciously. Yes. And she's like, maybe D has something to do with it. And she moves into Annabelle. Why? Because Cause I saw him. Because I'm a kid, I'm, a, I'm just drawing conclusions. Yeah. There's a Yikes. man that doesn't look like he belongs. Like me. Hey, that guy looks fucking weird. Maybe that guy's a bad guy. Or, or maybe <laughs> he at least knows what's going on in this uh... in this sleepy one horse town. Or maybe he's not human. Yeah. I shouldn't even suspect he's not human. I do, because like you look at him and you're just like, look at him. There's no friggin' way. But uh, Annabelle comes into her and she's like, hey, I talked to my mom about that like rumor we talked about. Yeah, uh -huh. it turns out, nope, bullshit. It never happened, and you... What never happened? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, what did your mom say never happened? She said it was an urban legend, and that never that there was never a super thing. What's an urban legend? The thing that we just Some talked about. Some very vague thing. Yes. That's not an urban legend. Urban That's... legends have detail. Yeah. No, this <laughs> no, no, this is just a thing this that book <laughs> is, something happened. This book is six issues of vagaries. That's so, get so used to it. fucking weird it's, and frustrating. It's weird and frustrating how there's a lot of like... And I'm like, there's only six issues. <laughs> We didn't you, you know that at the time. To this out. You did. You you no. You did know there was going to be six issues. Like you only did six issues, though. What are you doing? And it's just because you're like, no, I need the first volume to come out so we can give this to the executives at Warner Brothers and they can make a show. Right. We don't want to make it too specific. Yeah. We want them to be able to fill in with whatever the TV. Which of course stuff they are they because do. it's not like the CW show is going to be six episodes. Right. No, it's going to be like thirty. <laughs> Naomi is not convinced, as you can imagine. She's like, don't you feel? something weird going on, and you as the reader are like, no. No, what? Because you didn't give us any context for the reality she had before all this happened. And by all this, I mean literally nothing. Okay, but it's going to be this revealed that she has she's some reason to feel that something happened, like something was hidden from her. Coincidentally, or... yes, but it's not that she has like a thing in her head that tells no. her that like the weird shit is a brew. I assume and we're not seeing... memories were changed or something. Yes. We're okay. not seeing her home life where like she looks at something and it looks a little different no. and then it reverts back. No, no. 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 Uh, you know what? That's fair. I, I know. I would complain if we did that, so. Yes. If we had so. to go back. <laughs> yeah. And we, we do go back, but like not like that. Mm. So she just wanders into Dee's shop, and she's like, hey, Dee. And he's like, what do you want? And I was told not to talk to you and tell you about the thing that ha Oh, I said it, didn't I? Yeah, that's it. So yeah. uh, that's what happens. And then he like throws her out of the shop, and you know, that's it. Yeah. The, 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 Stop asking questions. Yeah, the exposition that is dropped, which he gives because the book needs to happen is that there was a super thing that happened and it was 17 years ago mm -hmm. and she's like but that's how old i am and i would love it if like it wasn't connected to her in any way <laughs> i would love it if it was like when you're a kid or if you're like looking for patterns mm. or conspiracies 
you'll find one, but they're bullshit. <laughs> and the real meaning is in family and friendships and <laughs> knowledge, but no. This is this a comic book sale. This, this is a young adult book. Yeah, so it's it's she's very important, and the thing she found is definitely about her. Yes! <laughs> Just like Katniss Everdeen. Yeah. Or and literally any, or Harry Potter, <laughs> or any whoever's character. Whoever's in the Maze Runner. <laughs> yeah, right? That character. I have memories of like getting into like things like that. Yeah, aliens and, and shit. I it never crossed my mind that this is probably connected to me. <laughs> like that was not the point. No. It no? was just like interesting to like find secret stuff or hope that there was secret stuff out there yes. that you could like look into. The way that you linked it to yourself was that you were the one who was gonna crack the mystery. Yes. I didn't think that I was the, the part thing. of some grand conspiracy yeah. that all- And it all be about me. Maybe well, some people of course you didn't think it was a that. conspiracy at that well, point. Well, that's why she has a Superman complex because it is about her. Yeah. Or at least she's making it about her. So actually, it's appropriate that they call it the Superman Complex. <laughs> so Dee throws her out of the shop. He's like, I shouldn't have told you anything. And then closes the doors, gets on his motorcycle, and drives away. <laughs> she's like, that was really abrupt and weird. So she goes home, and she's hanging out with her parents, who are just like having a regular old conversation about Do we people. not see them? Do we, we just see, see their, their hands? hands? No, no, no. Is that a thing? That, that's, it, this is a cinematic... Uh, okay. We sequence. see them another. We do points. see them in the okay. next page. Okay. No, no, oh, we see their are. faces. Thank okay. You. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, it does suggest like no, they're not important. It's like Charlie Brown. Yeah. It's all about Naomi. Dialogue. It's just like sticks. Like you're lucky Annabelle has a name. It's all about <laughs> Naomi. But no, she talks to her parents and she's like, I talked to D. Do you guys know D? And they're like, uh, and they're like Uncle Owen and Aunt Brew. Like, oh my oh. god. <laughs> Did you? Tell D not to talk to me. Like, why did he get so weird? And they're like, why are you talking to D? What's up with D? Stop talking to him. He's weird. <laughs> that D's just a crazy old man. That's right. <laughs> but the parents have like a really well executed reaction to their daughter who is searching for bullshit. Like they knew she was gonna be. Or they just jangled no. keys or they were afraid she was. No, it's no, in a way where they're like, oh honey, like, like, no. Oh. You're not like, do we are you really gonna make your parents tell you you're not special? <laughs> Like, why oh. couldn't you just be like your friends and right. just do, and just get wrapped up in some other shit? Like, is this- What a brutal thing to say to another person. <laughs> I, it's true, but like, that's the attitude. And it's like, it's it's genuine and I think it's fair. Right. <laughs> she's like, because she Because in the real this... world, she's not special. <laughs> well, and also like, you are special to them. Right. The people who picked you right. and raised you. Yeah, but not in some like great cosmic sense. No. Not more than anyone else. Like, not like anybody else, exactly. <laughs> like, and that's unifying too. Yeah. They're dodging it, but in like, a realistic way. And mm. you're reading a comic book about a superhero named Naomi, so like, you know that she's gonna be special. Right. But like, you're watching these parents, and I, I, I don't know, I interpret it as them being like, Oh God! But it is them going like, "Oh no, uh, he, his, your she's dad's on the Darth Vader." Right. But uh, but she says, "Is D my biological father?" And they just look so crestfallen, and they're like, "No, honey. Oh, honey no, no, it was a closed adoption. You, we nobody knows who your father, your birth father is. Like, and who gives a fucking shit?" Yeah. They gave you up. Right. They didn't even know. It's like we don't even know. We don't know what the circumstances were, and we don't want to. And it's not that like, it's yeah, not Yeah, we've never tracked down your real parents. Yeah, and you can't because it's a closed adoption. You, you legally cannot know. Yeah. And it's like, it's okay to have these feelings, but like you need, but like this is our time to reinforce the fact that like we love you and you know, you're, you're part of this family and all this stuff. And she's like, okay. And you're like, why are you bringing this up now? And she's like, I don't know. And she won't let it go. She's like, but you don't like know D like personally? <laughs> And they're just like, okay. Yeah, but like, what's up with this D guy? Right, but like, but no. Because I really feel like he's part of but he something. he had like a lot of tattoos though. And like. <laughs> you don't understand. It he's wasn't huge. of stuff. It was weird, intricate designs. Yeah. <laughs> like he's part of an alien race or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like I'm in a movie. Right. And he's like a character. Like his tattoos look like a map to another <laughs> fucking dimension or something. Like they're he didn't not... just have a sandwich on his arm. No. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not the mother. It's literally like all this intricate bullshit that like no one would think to make. Yeah. Uh, if he had tribal bullshit, you know, if it just, if he, like, you know what I mean? If one of them was barbed wire, I'd be like, this guy's an asshole. Got okay, it. got it. <laughs> Yeah, and when I looked at his arm, like the symbols started like coming Blowing. off and like <laughs> manipulated around in the air and stuff. I don't know, it just seemed kind of weird. Oh, Naomi, please. Okay, you're 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 hurting your father and my feelings. Naomi, have you been on the drugs again? Yeah. Wait, this is the Pacific Northwest, of course. Of course you are. are. Yeah. But good for and you. And so are we. But she asks Annabelle to ask her mom because her mom seems to know everything, uh, who we never meet, to uh, tell her more about D, the mechanic, 
And so she does, and she says, oh, he's from, he's not from around here. He came from a place called like Iron Heights. And she's like, Iron Heights is a supermax prison. Not like a town. <laughs> and, then, and then the splash page we saw earlier was like, Superman fighting villains who are escaping from Iron Heights. Mm. Is one of them D? Yeah, no. <laughs> but Annabelle is just concerned for Naomi. She's like, hey, are you sleeping? Like, you seem like, <laughs> really on edge. And she's like, yeah, yeah, of course. And then Naomi closes her eyes and she sees this crazy sequence that you that is really cool, but like I, you, you can't parse it. It's just a bunch of stuff that's happening. Yeah. It's like just, just crazy ass stuff all happening at once against red skies and green fumes. And then there's a woman in power armor that looks suspiciously like Naomi. Uh, and that's it. And she's like, whoa. whoa. And, then, and these, these are visions she's having. It's like, ah, now she's getting visions. Maybe if you had indicated she dreams. was getting visions before. Right. Yeah, no. Because she's like, I can't sleep. Every time I close my eyes, I see like this crazy shit. I see these visions. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa visions? Because <laughs> before you were just like ascribing meaning to a recluse in town. And now you're seeing, vi it's just like, we need to get this book out <laughs> and make sure it's only six issues because Hollywood executives won't read a comic book that's more than six issues long. Right. You understand, she's been having these visions ever since she was a little child. She just thought she was a kid and imagined anything. things. Right, but just the same thing. We're not gonna thing, say that More though. intricately and yeah. in a linear fashion. No, they don't <laughs> even say that. It's just, no, suddenly I'm getting these visions of this thing, now, right now. And also I've been having them like, since the Superman stuff. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you know, it would be great is no. if she saw that shit when she touched D. Right. Except, oh. like, it wouldn't work that way, because that's not who D is. No. But, it's not that sure. It's not like she's activated by a thing. It's no. just like. So she gets dressed, mm -hmm. and she goes out, and she grabs her skateboard, because she's a teenager, and uh, she skates down to D's garage, and she breaks in, looks around, and what she finds is a photograph of D during better times. And it's he has, like, hair and a beard, <laughs> and he's cradling a black woman who is beautiful. So naturally she assumes the black woman is her mother. <laughs> D is then like, could you please not touch that? It's the only one I have. And she's like, ah! And huh? D is like hilarious because he's a lot like Ragnarok Korg where he's like, hey, uh, yeah, I'm just huge and intimidating, but uh, don't, mind, don't mind me. <laughs> Looks like tonight's not your night. Uh, but no, he's really <laughs> soft-spoken. He's really like gentle and he's just like, hey, like don't. Hey, could You're you saying please? I've learned to be gentle because like I break a lot of stuff. Yeah, like I'm huge. <laughs> exactly, all your shit is really fragile and she's like you you lied to me and then you get to the next page and it's like another book and you're like jesus oh the book just kind of stopped yeah like ben has just wrote all of naomi issues one through six in one sitting and then was like <laughs> okay jamal draw it now he and david f walker work together on this and i very much believe that because like there's a lot of cool walkerisms in here but at one point he's just like we have to have a page break for the next issue we, we yeah we need we need a, a a cliffhanger or something why wasn't that cliffhanger when he was like Hey, don't break that, please. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Oh, no. is he gonna hurt her? Or what? Right. And then no. you find out the next issue. No, he's a gentle yeah. giant. It's no, half a page of deal. Deal. No, let's deflate that tension immediately, yeah. and then you can buy another issue. Okay. I mean, I guess that's fine. Yeah. It's just weird because that's not what usually well, happens. No, because like I'm not. I mean, like yeah, we're selling it individually, but like I'm not selling it for that. I'm selling this so that I can put right. it in the hands of a, part of a Hollywood executive, story. and also so it can be a graphic novel you can sell right. in bookstores. Right. You know where teenagers go. I can't have these jarring breaks <laughs> where the end of a book would be. That would be confusing. That would be like it was six different books. Except like that's literally the formula for how Harry Potter was so <laughs> digestible, but whatever. Yeah. And Bendis is like a fucking student of that because every issue of <laughs> Ultimate Spider-Man ends with a massive cliffhanger, regardless of context. They, you know, they just have this back and forth. She's just like, ah, I'm a teenager. And he's like, okay, well, chill out. And she's like, are you my father? And he has this look on his face like, Oh, this poor chick. Oh, God. She's just all over the place. Like, no, hon, I'm no, not your father. No one's your father. You're a fucking alien. <laughs> but this is my mother! <laughs> no, she's not. Yes, yeah. no. This is my this is my wife. I please don't talk about her. It makes me upset. <laughs> like she's dead, obviously. And I I miss her a lot. I don't look at this picture very much. Please don't make but me upset. I, I haven't done anything to you. When you like yeah. broke into my place and you're like accusing me and right? like yelling at me. Yeah, like all this is really fucked up. So she's like, Are you human? And he's like, Oh. <gasps> and so he proceeds to then tell her like who he is. He's a Thanagarian. That's a hawk person. What? How come he doesn't have wings? Well, depending on the continuities, uh, right. you know, the wings are vestigial or they're robotic, and you can take them off. All right. Okay. I, Where's I didn't his see hawk that coming. helmet? Well, he got rid of. Well, he got rid of all his hawk shit. Well, th cool. this is—he is not like Carter. He is a like, he's like an elite special forces hawk soldier, who was involved in the Ran-Thanagar War. Now, the Ran-Thanagar War is irrelevant and who gives a shit. 
but is that a real shit. thing that happened? It is a real thing that happened twice in two okay. different crises. But like, <laughs> uh, Bendis liked to refer to the Kree Skrull War a lot at Marvel. So when he's at DC, we have to refer to a big cosmic war. My writing shorthand is I always allude to or refer to that big cosmic war between two non-human races. Right. In Marvel, it's the Kree Skrull War. When I'm at DC, I have to keep doing that because I'm Bendis, so I will make it the Rand Thanagar War, and that's it. And it's not that he read it or he likes it or he's gonna pay homage to it, it's just that I'm going to use that as my shorthand to allude to cosmic battles. Again, okay. cut paste. Yep, cut paste, replace. Interesting, So okay. Now, as a uh, comic book fan, could you think of a better example he <laughs> could have used? Maybe well, no. something a little more well known? I mean, Or is he, that really well known in DC? I have no idea. I, it's been referred to, but it's not terribly, it's not like it's a seminal graphic novel you can pick up at your local comic book store. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not domination. Yeah, uh, he <laughs> does <laughs> invasion. Uh, that's invasion it. of we're, the dominators. Well, they were dominators. Dominator. Maybe there isn't a better example. It, it's just funny, because like the Kree Scroll War, we've talked about many, many times. Yeah, like, mostly because of his references, but uh, we also okay. did the Kree Scroll War. <laughs> we will never do the Rand Thanagar War. <laughs> During or around the Rand Thanagar War, D was like an elite special forces black ops soldier and he and his wife were badasses who got tired of war and they decided to leave and so they went to gem world and it's like uh they decided to leave no they abandoned their duties that's exactly now. right yeah. yes they did yeah they, they did. went able. yeah they're deserters they yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i mean like and if they're ever found out again they will be murdered well one of them will. yes because the other one's already dead well yes and that's that's how it is yeah and the thanagarians are like spartans and shit so it's like yeah that makes sense yeah uh, okay. and, and and it's it's okay for us to sympathize with him because yeah. Like, right. Well, you know, I don't want to live a life of war either, so right. works for me. Right. But yes, uh, so he refers to Gem World because he wants to refer to Gem World because it's also like, <laughs> let's push Amethyst because I also remember that when I was reading comics and that was a thing and it was also edited by like Karen Berger before she took over Vertigo, so. It's relevant to him. Yeah. Like, no. He's making all Gem of this World. stuff tie in. It's well, all he, part of Wonder. Wonder Comics. Wonder Comics. And I think he like wants, I, th I think he likes Gem World because it's so stupid. I mean, it sounds cool. Does it? It sounds like I would go there and there would just be like gems all over the it place. It sounds like a like place. I'm a, like I'm a gnome. Right. And I'm like mining for Okay, things. see, I, I associate, maybe because I actually know who Amethyst is, but I associate it with like She-Ra and stuff. Mm. Who, who, she is cool, but all the other stuff around her, like Cowl and, and Madame Raz, not so cool. He's quietly making these things that are wholly irrelevant in the DC universe, suddenly relevant. Uh, you're like, Gem World, I'm gonna name drop that. Now yeah. you're like, Gem World, I remember that. There's a book on the stands that's yeah. about Gem World. It's yeah. a place that's totally outrageous. Yeah, go pick it Gem up. Gem World! Bingo. <laughs> so they go to Gem World and they're being hunted and uh, like they're going through a portal that's gonna take them to Earth where they'll never be found because like, I, you know, who gives a shit why they think that. But right before they get in the portal, they're like, woohoo! And they celebratorily kiss. And then she's shot through the chest and dies. And then he falls through the portal. And there's actually like a beautiful image that is oh like an God. allusion to the Sistine Chapel of God and man. Oh. And I'm like, what? And it's just because Jamal Campbell's great and just wants to do that. It has no relevancy to the story or the right. characters. Yeah, it doesn't like actually refer to them. No, but I like the image. Yeah, uh, it's cool. But she dies and her he doesn't even have anything to bury. And then he lands on Earth and he's stranded there. And then he decides to like yeah. set up Yeah, well shop. that was the plan, was yeah. to be stranded yeah. there. Right, right, but not without but, her. But not without uh, her, yeah. How long ago was this war, if you know? Uh, because like- A couple of years ago, 17 five years, ago. years ago. I think <laughs> in this it's 17 years ago. Uh, okay. Because, oh, okay. Um, because she was 17. I don't know if the rest of the universe knows this, but Earth has been a pretty hopping place, what with all the superheroes and intergalactic. Yeah, also, and I think Hawkman that's... literally like is a hero here and yeah. is from there. <laughs> yeah, so I think they know how to get here. That's true, but they won't declare war on this planet just to get oh, me. Right. No. Superman will show up and be like, get the fuck out of here. He'll be like, fair enough, sorry. <laughs> so, no, that guy's a deserter. I don't fucking care. What? Well, he lives here now. Yeah. Uh, I have get a, out of here. I have a special sympathy for people who are from other planets that come here <laughs> that looking we're for also, refuge. Yeah. Like ravaged. Yeah. We, we don't destroyed. have an extradition treaty with you. Get out, get out of here. <laughs> and we never will. And so we never will. Off. So get the fuck out. So he's telling her the story, and then he just starts crying, and she's like, Oh. Oh. Well, good luck with all. This is awkward. Yeah. And then you brought this up, man. <laughs> yeah. And then the the garage door opens, and Naomi's mom's there, and she is just like full of 
piss and vinegar and just spit and fire. She's just like, what the fuck is going on here, Naomi? It's midnight and you left your room and you're talking to this fucking guy. Day I'll fucking kill you. And she's got a baseball bat and she just smashes all this shit. And he's like, what? Hey, she broke into my place and she's asking me stuff and I'm still thinking about my wife, which is why I'm here. Could you <laughs> Shut up, Jay Slap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. I don't know if you're bullshit. That's literally it. She goes like, what happened to your precious stupid thinning area honor code? And starts backhanding him across oh. the face and he's just taking it because he's just so sad. Oh, so she knows knows everything. Yeah, of course, they all know everything. They're all lying to her because she's right. She's super important and special. <laughs> okay. Like, get, out, get in the car, Naomi, and they get in the car, and he, he says he's sorry, and she just looks at him like she's gonna fucking stab him in the night while he's sleeping. And so they get in the car, and, uh, Mom, you know, Dad's driving because Mom's too fucking mad, and Naomi's in the back seat, and she's just like, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah, and so that was like super suspicious. Yeah. Like, it why was. would her mom do that? Right. Why wouldn't she just come in and be a normal mom? I don't know. Well, because that is what a normal mom would do. Yeah. I know. guess. Just attack someone and break all their stuff with a baseball yeah, bat. Not yeah. a mom that's trying to keep a fucking secret, though. No. Well, the secrets are out. They are driving to the big reveals. She's uh, like, wait, wait, we're not going home. He's like, no, we're not going home. I guess you're not going to let you this fucking drop. You know too much drop, now. So. Now we have to drive okay. you to this place and kill you. We're going to kill you and bury you in the woods now. I was now. going to keep lying to you yeah. forever, but since you had to keep asking stupid bullshit questions. Now go. I got to go through the adoption process again. Yeah. And they're going to ask, what happened to the daughter you had? <laughs> and I don't know what I'm going to tell them. I'm going to make them. I'm going to lie to them because I can't tell them I fucking killed you in the woods. You tell me what we did with you. You ran away, you got hooked on drugs, what, what do you what, got? what do you want? What do you want? Anything you want. What's your, what's your... What, as yeah. long as you're dead at the end. Of what's it? the end of your story? <laughs> you write the ending of your story and dig your own I'll, grave. I'll grant you that, at least. <laughs> I like where this show is going. It's getting dark. <laughs> yeah, this is a dark show. And then she murders both of them and she bathes in their blood and <laughs> activates her power. Man, wonder books. Nice. Yeah! <laughs> Now it's getting good. I was starting to, starting starting to, to sort of zone out. Yeah, but <laughs> so anyway, they they go to a cave by the water, and uh, Dad is like super soft spoken and super kind, and he's super like chill, and he's just like, "Hey, I would have loved to have lied to you forever and not do this because you know, but but your mom and I, we 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 stayed up all night like for so many for for so many years trying to come up with a way. We're gonna tell you and how we're gonna do it, and I almost did it like a bunch of times, but like we're gonna we're just gonna have to do. It. We're gonna rip the bandaid off. So come on, like let's go get out of the car." She's like, is mom coming? She's like, nope, nope, mom's not coming. She's gonna stay in the car because this isn't about her. It's about you and me. And mom's like, I can't do it. And then she does that and she goes anyway. So it doesn't matter. It's just oh. a weirdly like dramatic sequence for no good reason at all. So dad and Naomi, they go, they walk across the rocks, they go into the cave. And she's like, is this the part where you're gonna kill me? He's like, yeah, I changed your diapers and fed you and like and bathed you for 17 years because I want to kill you in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's fair. It's, oh, okay. Yeah, no, that is what's happening though. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I let your guard down so you won't fucking move. This is how I get all your powers, apparently. Yeah, and then I drink your blood, and then yeah. I get powerful. You had to, like, gestate or whatever in order for the powers to mature, <laughs> yeah. so that then I could steal them. Exactly. I was going to kill you when you were, like, you know, 30, and I was 60. Yeah. That would have no, been more effective, but, no, but you, ruined know, it. you ruined it. No one's killing anybody in this story. So instead, uh, he tells her to turn the flashlight on her phone so she could see, and they go into this cave, and then he, like, turns off some special imaging device, and his spaceship arrives. Oh. And she's like... It, it, he hid this spaceship in this cave where no one in the Pacific Northwest would go, which is full of shit. You're from there, man. You know how many homeless people there are. No <laughs> one's living in that cave. The cave has a defense system. The ship. The ship eats the homeless people. Right. Yeah. I'm sort of helping the homeless problem. Right. That, 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 that's Northwest. how it fuels the engines that keep the imaging chain chamber on. Right. Yeah. I can't just go leave indefinitely. This on. Yeah, it would yeah, run that, out of power. Right, you, you leave the lights on your car to like, f you know, light up a picnic. Eventually the car is going to Yeah, you got like die. six hours, it's gone. There, you're killing this homeless This car's been running for 17 years. 17 years. That's a lot of homeless people that run for 17 years. Well, there's a lot of homeless people in Seattle. I don't know if you've been yeah. there in a while, but like, so she's like, is this a spaceship that I landed in? He's like, no. And then she turns around. <laughs> no, you're not Superman. God. Oh my God. He's like, no, it's my spaceship because I'm special. <laughs> Oh. She's like, what? And he, I love it because he's a Ranian soldier. He's, oh, of course he is. Yeah, because oh, Ran Thanagar. Because yeah. I already used 50% of my Ran Thanagar references, so now I'm going to use Ran. Right. And so his, her dad is a, is a Ranian elite special ops soldier who was sent here to hunt down a, a uh, Thanagarian rogue. Yeah. yeah, that's right. What? what? Yeah, Why did he stop? You'll see. He'll uh. explain it. I thought he just, like, no. Also left the war. Be like, no, I also... Yeah, and I, yeah, you no. know too much, and I gotta go down there and assassinate you. <laughs> so 
here he is. And I love that he's like a middle-aged man in like this freaking suit. Like Jamal Campbell's amazing because like some some comic book artists, they're great, but they're like everyone is the ideal version of their physical abilities. Mm -hmm. Like everyone has an eight pack and cum cutters, but like <laughs> dad here is just, fill he's like, yeah, it almost doesn't fit, it's a little tight. <laughs> but I love it, it's just like, it's your dad, and I'm a Randian soldier. And I just, I love like at every turn, she's like, oh my God, dear, you're my dad? No, but I am a Thanagarian. And it's like, dad, am I an alien? No, but I'm Randian. And it's like, mom, are you anything? She's like, nope, I'm just pissed. <laughs> I did almost, I did try and beat someone to death with a baseball bat, but apparently they're really tough. Yeah. So she's like, holy shit, dad is a friggin' Iranian soldier. That's awesome. Am I half Iranian? Nope, nope you're still you're adopted. adopted. Nope, what the fuck are you talking nope, about? everything in your world is special except for you. And that'd be kind of funny too. That would be, I would love that. Oh that's my God, that'd be a that twist would be fantastic. Right? Yeah, everybody she meets, like Annabelle's also like, she's from Gem World, and like, <laughs> that would be fucking amazing. And I'm like, there's no it's way. It's like if you were friends with the Teen Titans. Yeah. So anyway, he tells a story about how you sent to Earth to fucking kill a rogue Thanagarian. He goes there, and then Mom shows up, and she's like, "Hey, I was sick. I was sick of waiting in the car." I got bored. And also, like, why did Mom wait in the car anyway? What the fuck? And she's like, mostly because she's like, it's Dad's story, but like, yeah. I'm part of the story because like. I, I I entered the story at some point. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I hit all this. He falls in bullshit. love with me. I wish it were that. I wish she hated it. Yeah. But it, no, she's so she like gets into. The, she's like, can I sit in the spaceship? And she's and he's like, of course you can. He opens the ship up, and the wife is like, I can't believe after all this time I never thought to ask to sit in the spaceship. Like, yeah. I, I've I've known these things here. Fucking weird. It is weird. You, that's the first thing you do. Yeah. Like, What's wrong with even you? an eight year old knows to ask the fireman to climb on top of the fire truck. <laughs> Because it's an Earth fire truck. Yeah, but if it's a spaceship, you don't even ask. You just climb it because it's a friggin' once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah, well, I wasn't eight. I was a full grown, I was like 25 or whatever. And that's like beneath me. That's like childish. So Greg arrives on Earth and, you know, he's like, I'm, I'm Randy and so I look like a person. Like I look like a human being. Mm -hmm. And he sees D in the garage and he goes, there he is. And he was so pissed that like his mission was over when he arrived, like he arrived, like that was too he put easy. on his Earth outfit, and he's like, "Time to begin. Where am All I right, gonna? I'm gonna go deep cover. Right. I'm gonna set up a life for myself. Oh, there gonna... he is over there. Uh, Damn it! Oh. It's like I just found this trying. great donut shop. <laughs> like he might as well. Have called I finally his... get to Earth. Yeah, his 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 mechanic shop has been called Hawkman's. Like, no, it's <laughs> he's just like that sucks, and he just goes, "Are you fucking for real?" So he just. He's talking to D because D doesn't know he's Ranian. Right. And as they're talking and having this interaction, he just uh, goes, "All right, well, I'll see you later. Have a good one." And he clandestinely hears a girl squeeing across the street because this beautiful woman who would become his wife is an artist who just sold a piece, and she's celebrating with a friend. And he sees her, and he's, he's just like, "This chick is so fucking hot." So he abandons his mission to assassinate the Thanagarian. <laughs> he just immediately goes native. Yes. He's like, holy shit, I'm in. That. That. Earth women are just so hot. Well, because he's like, I know where he is. If I ever need to fulfill my mission, I'll just go over there and kill him. Right. If, but if, in the meantime. If my like, general or whatever calls up, he's like, hey, you got that guy yet? Oh, 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 oh blam, yes. Yes. <laughs> so then he just like, he just bangs this chick and and, and, and lets her fly around in his spaceship like they make out on the windshield of their spaceship. <laughs> Wait but she never gets in How the spaceship. How did she never get in the spaceship if they were up <laughs> yeah. there? That's why this book is like kind of slept shot. It's like, there's no fucking way. Well, he wouldn't let her in the spaceship. He's like, I can't let you oh, in I my spaceship. This is expensive You'll push too many government buttons. technology. Here, here's the thing. Hold on real tight to the outside. I'll fly <laughs> outside. Yeah. No. Nope, she was in it. They got out and they hooked up on the hood of their car overlooking the Pacific Northwest. Turns out that like, Ranian physiology is so alien to humans that humans and Ranians can't have hybrid babies. Like, they can't have children. Even though Kryptonians and humans can definitely have children. So it's like, whatever. <laughs> and they look exactly the same. They look so exactly like the same. Something's gotta be the same. Yeah, I remember, I think it was Stepan Sejic, uh, like, did a cartoon where it was like, Superman and Lois and they're gonna bang. And like, he takes off his clothes, she takes off her clothes, but it's like cropped from the bottom down. She goes, what the fuck is that? And he's like, that's my penis. And she's like, what's up with the pincher? He's like, to grab onto you. <laughs> that's amazing. And it's like, because he's an alien. he's an alien. Yeah. Except he's an alien who otherwise looks exactly like a person. Why right. would that one thing be different? Yeah, but like, why did, what, then why is every single thing perfectly one-to-one? -one? It was yeah. the reason there's something there's, different. There's, 
There has to be it's something. Only, there is. He yeah. has power. And, and in this, the thing that's different is he can't get her pregnant. When they take off their clothes, he's like, wait, you have a vagina too? <laughs> But they don't adopt in the conventional sense. Uh, while they're living their lives, uh, both Greg and Dee get like pings on their interstellar communication devices. It's a device that like, you know, it's never gone off like this before. And he's like, what the fuck's this? It's reading some odd energy signature. And so he goes to like track where it's coming from and it's like the high school football field. And Dee's there too, he's like, hey, Greg, my thing went off. Is, <laughs> is your thing okay? Look, I know we're mortal enemies, right. but like, truce? Right, yeah, literally that, well just like, there's no way D didn't know Greg was Ranian, and there's no way that Greg hid that he was Ranian from the Thanagarian. So like, the two of them are just like, okay, anyway, your thing went off. Yeah, mine too. All right, what the fuck is this? You think it's the Thanagarians or the Ranians? Like, who, who are we gonna have to fight to preserve our mundane Earth-like existence? <laughs> right. And uh, then a portal opens up, and it's neither. Instead, it's Naomi's mom, who is wearing this like elite strike force outfit that was seen in the vision that Naomi had earlier in the book, mm. being chased by very distinct characters whom we'll never see again. And they blasted the thing and they're fighting her, and so. Oh, she's being chased. It's yes. not like they're a team. No, no, no. 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 She's being, ha she's, she's been attack. hunted, and uh, the, the portal was opened for her to escape, and so. Uh, Greg and Dee engage the aggressors against Naomi's mom, but she is zapped, and then uh, Dee throws them back to the portal, and apparently in this book, portals work where they open via an external device, but they close when the character you don't want to see anymore goes through it. <laughs> I'm only well, open for a certain amount of time. It was a time, time thing. It was sure. the exact second. He just got lucky. Yeah. He threw them well, through and closed. Multiple characters get the, lucky in this book. It'd be wonderful if you, he throws them back through the portal. There, that solved them. Yeah. And then like two seconds later, they just walk back they through. Just like, come back out. No, my uh, portal's open. No. I have a thing. It, I pushed this, the portal opens. <laughs> I, how do you think I got here? Yeah. Well, she opened the portal, I assume, to I escape assume. them. Yeah, no. She, her, actually it was her, her sister slash like, uh, you know, whatever, friend. Someone on her side. Someone on her side. Yeah. So, uh, Naomi's mother dies, they hold this baby. Where'd it's, the baby come from? The was baby, she holding the baby? Yeah, Naomi's mother uh, had the infant when she was on the run and okay. she was protecting her baby. Okay. And so they hold, they have this baby, she's crying, and Dee and Greg look at each other and Dee's like, I got a lot of like stuff going on, so I'm not gonna raise the baby. Yeah. And D, you know, and Greg's like, that's fine, I'll raise the baby. We want yeah. babies anyway, so here we go. So he takes the Oh, I kid anyway, it worked out great. That's right. Oh, this is exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Oh, sweet. This is like a magical wish granting portal. <laughs> Thank you, magical portal, for killing this woman and right. her child. Yeah, and robbing her of her daughter. <laughs> the baby came with like a blanket, not unlike Superman, and a special black box. And the oh. black box is uh, kept on the ship. He didn't like put it in his sock drawer. Do they not wonder like, Whoa, what the fuck was that? Who are these people? Sure they do, but like they don't care enough to like investigate it in any okay. way. Did they mention that like, I don't recognize these outfits. They're not from any known they, species or faction. The closest thing we get is that he once had the box checked by Star Labs, but then like immediately took it back after they couldn't find anything because he didn't want them asking too many questions. Okay. Of course, that would what? not fucking work. No! They'd be like, be uh, like uh, no. No, we're, we're Star Labs. It. This is some kind of alien thing. You can't just, like, have it. Thanks You're for giving it to us, dude. though. Don't worry, I'm not just a normal dude. I'm a, a Randy. Right, like, plus, yeah, like, it's Star fucking uh, Labs. They interact with aliens all the time. Like, yeah. yeah, our, like, alien detection archway you walk through immediately detected you were Ranian, so yeah. we know who you are, where you're from. Yeah. It immediately pinged Ran. They're coming for you. <laughs> Like, uh, Adam Strange Superman's is gonna be coming to arrest you. Superman's gonna be here any minute. He's actually yeah. here right now because he constantly comes to Star Labs. Or The Flash is here, anybody. But fuck that because we need to keep it trim for TV. So instead, <laughs> it's just like, here's the box. It's got a cool logo on it. The internet will speculate. What does the logo look like? It kind of looks like a black lantern or a white yes, lantern Yes, it ring. does! So is she a lantern? The internet blew up and, and there was a lot of time between issues. So like, I feel like they switched gears. But in any case, uh, it's <laughs> not a lantern. <laughs> at all, and the internet was like, she's totally a lantern, and uh, and and Walker DC's and Max like, were like, nope, no, no, why would you say that? <laughs> yeah, literally, there was Go an interview <laughs> uh, I don't know, because the symbol you put on it is a lantern ring symbol. Yeah, it, uh, it is straight up a way. As if. And you wrote Batman Universe where you just like invented an entire new different type of white lantern. <laughs> so like clearly you got lanterns on the brain. Yeah. It's almost like I could set my watch to the tropes that you commit to your, by yourself. It's not a lantern thing, okay? I'm just uncreative. <laughs> 
There's only so many symbols I can think of. Yeah. Well, no, it's it's yeah. Granted, it does look. Yes, it does look like. Okay, it does it, look like it that. Looks like a lantern symbol, just like she looks like a human. Right. But, but she's but not. she's not. Just and like that's not. not. So it's actually completely fuck fucking yeah. different. It's actually totally okay. different. Uh, it's it's actually like a different kind of logo that I will like modify slightly when we see the flashback about where it comes from. When Greg hands Naomi the box. The box like melds into her hand and she's like Bleh! and she, like power comes out of her because she's special and important. Oh, so, so until this moment she didn't have any power. Nope, it came she had from nothing. the box. Came from the bo well the box activated her power. Oh, okay. But did, uh, was that did, did her dad plan for no. that or he didn't no, he's know like, that's this what's going to no happen? This, this box is, yours. is your birthright here. Yeah, here Take you go. this. And she's like Bleh! and he's it's like oh, oh god, what oh god, I'm set up a bomb or something. Cuz remember like he's Iranian his mortal enemy, D, is a Thanagarian. They have nothing to do with each other yeah. or her. Right. She came from a portal from an alien that they didn't recognize, <laughs> chased happened... by other aliens they didn't recognize. Yeah. The only thing that links them is they had a device that just happened to be able to detect the energy of that portal. Yes. Because it's like sci-fi energy or whatever. Sure, yeah. And when crazy <laughs> shit go, what, did, did it go off when Coast City was resurrected by the Green Lantern Ray? Did it go sure. off when- <laughs> Oh, it pings all the time. they've been there, yeah. Right, yeah. Did it go off when the Black Lanterns invaded? Did it go off during the Sinestro Corps War? Yeah, I know I'm yeah. picking Lantern yeah, stuff, but, but like- all that I just didn't show you that, Did but it yeah. go off when Superman died and shit? Like, did no, <laughs> it pings like literally like every three days. No. But usually those things are far away and exactly. I can investigate. This was in my backyard, so I figured I would look. I, no, they went. To, they had to go to the football field at the high school. But yeah, like, but nearby. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, it was in the backyard. backyard. That's true. Yeah. It's like, I don't, oh shit, it's going off, and it's telling me I gotta go to friggin' Texas. Fuck that. No. No, oh, this was a football Texas. field. Great. All right, I guess I'll go okay, check that. That's funny. If it kept going <laughs> off, it doesn't. He says it's the first time it's ever gone off like that. But like, oh, if it kept damn. going off during every fucking superhero <laughs> complex, like Metropolis, nah. Gotham, uh, uh. Coast City, pass. Like never. But now it's like, oh shit, that's like 18 yards away. All right. Uh, I have no excuse. I guess to I'll not go check look. this out. Yeah. So uh, Naomi immediately arrives at Annabelle's house where she's playing the cello because she's a studious individual. And she's like, hey, so they talk and they have this back and forth. And Annabelle is surprisingly cool with it. Not because she's a super secret alien unless volume two says that she is. But for right now, she's a regular person who's really cool and chill with everything because of course she would. Like if your friend, if Ben showed up and was like, guess what? I got fucking superpowers. I'd be like, right. <laughs> I, I would not. I would not be like, oh! like I wouldn't like, faint like fucking in no, some stupid superhero no, movie. No, I'd be like, here's the number of a therapist. Like, <laughs> no, probably not he, he flew. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, like I showed it. Yeah. No, if you were like, dude, and you glowed and flew, I'd be like, yup. <laughs> yeah, that, that tracks. That tracks. That would happen to you, Ben. Yeah. So uh, she says to Annabelle, she's like, my dad is a fucking space alien. She's like, whoa. Does that mean you're what? a space alien? Nope. I mean, or it doesn't mean of, that. It doesn't mean I'm not. We're related. I'm but still I am that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they have this back and forth, and then he uh, just said she came out of a portal. Yeah. yeah. So she thinks she's she's an alien. Yeah. She's just not the same alien. Well, we. That's true. Yeah, but not. Yeah, I'm not from him. <laughs> so you know, she she demonstrates she has powers. She like does this little like you know thing with her hands. And she murders her friend. <laughs> no, yeah, because she doesn't know what. She powers. shreds her to ribbons. <laughs> yeah, that'd be amazing, and then it becomes like an invincible comic. Uh, <laughs> She she like she emanates glowing auras Stuff. and shit. And Annabelle says she's Shreking because like at the end of Shrek when they kiss they like rise. I'm like that's what? something no one would say. So uh, but yeah, she, boom. Uh, when her powers activate, she also has a rad cool outfit that like sweet. Like a Green Lantern. What are these powers? Yeah, the, uh, light show. Vague. Is she's this the dazzler. First time she's used them, or she used no, them before? No, she used them when the when the black oh, box okay. went into her hand, and now okay. she's able to activate them. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, so the black box went into her hand, and her parents were like, "Well, I guess you can just go out in the world." No, now. no. What 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 is this? Well, let's go back. Let's go back. Uh. Fifteen seconds ago, when uh, <laughs> we were on the ship, and we have like a full on like here's the exhibition of her explaining what happened. Oh, when, and what happened is when the blo the box went into her hand. Jor-El's monologue to Superman when he discovers the Fortress of Solitude. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> her mom's holographic message to her. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's totally different. Is beamed into her head oh. and gives her an entire issue's worth of context and background what? about what her fucking life is like and where she's from. Look at. Look oh at, my God! What? The whole issue is just like here's where you come from and why. That is a lot of fucking, that's a fucking novel. This is, this is another four issues worth of information 
crammed into half an issue. Yeah, but this is issue four. The executives never get this far. Yeah, I gotta give them the they whole. They stopped spiel. at like one and a half. They're like, yeah, we can make this. Yeah, well, if they're not gonna, if they're not gonna get this far, they're not gonna read all those okay. words. This is an episode of the show. Yes. And we have all the special effects and crap. You get to see yeah. all the battles and right? stuff. And, and like, and, and all the budget is for that one episode. Yeah. The rest exactly. of it's all high school bullshit. Yeah. 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 The previous episode ends with like, well, let me tell you a story, and then like. Boom, next episode is the story, and then it ends with like, wow, that's crazy, yep. what? And then, and then we go back to high school. Money. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the context. Here's where Naomi comes from, right? Like, yeah, can, how, how short can you make this? How much, how can okay. you? Okay. <laughs> of all of that shit. Yeah. Naomi is from an alternate Earth in the multiverse. I hate you. Is it one that we know? No. Damn it. Never charted, never explained. So she is in, human. In a later book, they will actually have her look at the multiverse map. I was gonna say, do we get to find out like which one in the map it is? They, they go point on the map, what Earth you're from. <laughs> and she's like, it's not here. And here's the best part she's of like, that. I don't know what this fucking means, in, what? In that book, in the very issue, I think it's Action Comics number 1016, they like, look at the map. Most people have never seen this map. <laughs> and then, it's in the Hall of Justice. Yeah. In the Hall of Justice gift shop, they sell the multiverse map. <laughs> and I'm like, why would they do that? Well, what? because, you know, the because DC Comics sells do. that. But, but like, We're the Justice League. We're what? guardians of Earth and shit. We, go, we know about the map. why say most people have never seen it if it's half price in the gift shop? <laughs> well, because it's not a very popular item. <laughs> most people don't want to think that's this is like, the only way there you can are get other it. universes out there where they don't matter. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's bad just... enough that they don't matter in this one. <laughs> Well, and what's worse is maybe there's a there's maybe there's a you who does matter, but it ain't you. Yeah, actually, there almost <laughs> certainly is. Yeah, by all rights, if you're finding out about the multiverse now, you're the boring version of yourself. <laughs> there's oh. an infinite number of you, and they're all cool, or most of them are cool, but you're not. But you're yeah. not. What's I, I, special I, I, about this universe is how lame you are. Some of them are dead. <laughs> huh? So you know. Or gender bent. Yeah. You know? So if you like the way you are now. Congratulations! It could be way worse. Yeah, yeah. You could be a crocodile. <laughs> yeah, you could be you as a as a crocodile. There's a there's an Earth designation for that. You could be a dark multiversal version of yourself. Yeah. There could be a version of you who was killed by a weird version of Batman. Well, count so, your blessings. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Hey, no. at least you don't have to deal with Tempest Fugonaut in this universe. <laughs> this is true. That's all I'm saying. She is from an Earth where the ozone layer is destroyed. You know, by pollution and stuff. Oh. And so the radiation that comes through makes a portion of the population have powers and stuff. And I'm like, what? Oh. Uh, That's fucking, what solar radiation does? Did you write this in 1992? <laughs> is this an Earth Day yeah. special this you were working a, on? This is what if they didn't fix the hole in the ozone? What if they never banned fucking Freon? Turns <laughs> out, super cancer gives you powers. Uh, only a small percentage of you. Like thou only yeah. like a, a few thousand of you became super powered. Yeah. Well that's just like that's just the fucking that's that's uh, the X-Men. Yeah. They're birthed by the atomic age because of all the radiation and stuff or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, uh, it's well be, kind of. Yes. <laughs> and I think at the beginning they were suggesting that like the atomic age created like the the X gene or something yeah. like that, but like Yeah, because there was all the nuclear testing yeah, and there was right. all and it's like oh, the whole world's irradiated from like, no, testing. you're born this way. Yeah. Like, it's that's not... yeah, they changed it. But when they were created, yes. there's fears about nuclear radiation exactly. and causing mutations mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, ultraviolet radiation from the sun does give you skin cancer which is caused by mutations, mutations in your uh, DNA. Yeah. So like that's where it's coming from. Right. If you want a scientific, you know, reason why Bendis would make this up. Right. So, but it's not solar radiation. It's because of, like, it says that new energies are created and it causes, like, people to be superpowered. So, like, oh. a, a, a small handful of people were superpowered and, like, the, the, the way that Naomi's mother explains it, it's like, they, they got godlike powers. I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, and it's, if, if they were, then these people wouldn't have died. So it's not really godlike powers, but in any case, they got powers, and <laughs> well, like, like all heroes in comics have godlike powers. Yeah, well, like yeah, like Flash Compared has godlike powers. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look, Nightcrawler's there. He's in his hat and his coat. Oh with my the hood. god, He's yeah, got that his is tail. straight up Nightcrawler from X2 X Men United. <laughs> but it's random, and so some random people got powers. Some of them were good, and some of them were very bad. So like when you say random, like the entire world. No, no, no. Just a small percentage of the population no, got that. No, no, but like, like around the world. Oh, like yes. Sam, it's not random like, people no, from all like, the It's not like there was a whole... In Cincinnati, 29 people got superpowers. No, it's like the ozone layer yeah. was like destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But like, humanity still survived. 
and some of these people got powers. And one of those people is... So what you're saying is we can do without the ozone lane, we'll be fine. No. I'm, no. I'm saying that Most some of you of will them, die, yeah. but some of you will get rad powers. Yeah, and some well, of you, I I'll guess, be the one die. getting cool powers. I'll get low and float and shit. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so one of these people is Zumbato, and Zumbato was on death row, and he was strapped in the electric chair, and then he got hit by these rays and became powerful. Oh. And uh, he, did he become a flash? He did not become a flash. Because of yeah, electricity. He was, yeah, he was got oh. struck by lightning. No, he got hit by solar radiation, which is very different, or whatever the fuck new energies and radiations are in this book. Yeah, but electricity and solar radiation. Mm -hmm. That's true. He's not a flash. But... He is there was powerful. No chemicals. If he'd been hit with chemicals, yes, you need yeah. you need the combination of chemicals and oh, lightning. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the lightning needs to be you as well. You have to become the lightning. So Zumbato has vague <laughs> powers. The powers are really, really strong, and it makes him able to kill most most people. Oh. I, I can't even like if you, I can't explain. <laughs> you got all these that. fucking words in here, and they Zumbato can't even has describe big his powers. powers. Yeah, Zumbato is like powerful. is like Balrog. He has many powers, <laughs> and they're all vague, and they don't like, and, and they're and they're convenient for whatever he needs them to have. And if that were the thing, like my power is, I have a power for whatever situation I'm in. That would be a power. <laughs> this is nothing. He's just he's bigger, and he has like glowy dots on his arms and stuff. I don't fucking know what that means, but like he's supposed he is Rogelzar, he is Mongol, <laughs> he is. Doom Doomsday. He is every be bemuscled bad guy that Bendis wants to use in his books, but he's also a piece of shit. Like, he was going to be executed, but instead, he was the executor. And he doesn't call himself the executor, he calls himself Zumbato. And Zumbato <laughs> has superpowers, and like, the people who had powers also, like, it caused a power war where like the powers all like frat whose side are you on it became a civil war and like Zumbato got like assholes and yeah. Naomi's mom and dad got like regular people or good people oh so they were like the good leaders <laughs> yeah and like so they fought and then there were only like a handful of them who who, who survived and because then, Zumbato was so powerful yeah because Zumbato yeah. is so fucking powerful you see and also also so like the, the so like pollution causes radiation to make a, a to, to to activate the metagene right because that's what happens in the dc yeah. universe it's called the metagene we saw an invasion yes that's a thing that's a thing they don't say that and it's not about that because it's on another earth and another universe so fuck you so like we're not going to talk about metagenes or invasion or dominators or like that inherent ability. no this is something new and cool yes yeah, something new it's and not terragenesis either no it's not terragenesis <laughs> also marvel but like no. So instead, there's like a, a superpower civil war. It also ravages the earth and all these people die. But Zimbabwe's over here and Naomi's parents over here. And also, uh, another result of the radiation is that these superpowered people can't procreate. They can't be able to have children with each other and with Terrans, except for Naomi's parents who totally do and have one. And so it's Superman because like, you know, the Kryptonians don't have children, but like Jor-El and Lara do. So there yeah, you go. What, what, Not Kryptonians because didn't they have children? Can't. No, it's, it depends on which continuity you're going with. Oh but God, yeah, like, I didn't the know The post price continuity is that like they're eunuchs. So like, you know. Uh, so they just never died, so they didn't need to procreate? No, 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 they, they lost die. the ability to procreate. In, in Krypton, they choose not to procreate. It's like, you don't procreate. Like, oh. Or so the civilization was already doomed. No, no, it's through science. Like, we, it's, it, you know. Oh, I see. They don't procreate the natural yeah, way. Yeah, they don't, they don't okay. get down. But right. Jor and Lara did, so there you go. Uh, okay. But she wasn't afraid of his pincers. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, but Naomi's parents uh, do get down. They do have a baby, and that baby's powerful. It's just, you know, there's Jor-El so, and... Yep. They're special. She's they're, special. They're spe she's, she's special. She's not just special here. She she's, was special. She's special on that there. earth too. Yeah. yeah. And she's so special that like she might be the most powerful one of them all. And Why? So because they because the book says so. And so Zimbabwe's <laughs> because, like because one powerful person and another powerful yeah. person makes double, double power. The yeah. power. Yeah. Yeah. Double power. Yeah. I guess she is the first and only child of two of, superpowered people in that earth using those energies. So you so. might guess that maybe she would be really powerful. And it's just that's how it works, you know, like. Uh, Who's Reed to say? Sue would have be really funny children? if she had no powers. I would if love they're, that. Like, yeah, they're they're special too. Yeah, <laughs> and you still have no powers. <laughs> well, yeah, our powers cancel out. Yeah, their see. powers cancel out. You, they got the uh, the uh, well, the, 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 the superpower gene dream. is recessive. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be amazing. So Zumbato wants 
Naomi for himself because either to destroy her right. or to manipulate her into she's being part of his child. family. Yeah, she's the first of the new generation uh, from which we will. I don't even have her. that. No, that, oh. and they just they just say it at, like yeah, third he hand. Speak. No, Zimbabwe no, wanted does. a dialogue until the end of the book, but like just Zimbabwe's bad news. And if Zimbabwe were her father, and it's like actual bullshit, that'd oh. be great. But it's not oh. unless Volume Two comes out and changes everything. And there it is. But anyway, so uh, also Venice is a big anime fan because they're uh, their 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 midwife. Akira, who is a woman, uh, she's super smart, and uh, so she basically like helps to protect them and Naomi from Zimbardo and his forces. Oh, I should also point out that like this was Earth; these are Earthlings who were changed because Naomi's mother was a teacher, like in a, in a school, and her dad was a video game developer, <laughs> and his and. <laughs> And yeah, his okay. his video game hacksaw skills make him a brilliant tactician in the superpowered war. Oh yeah, he played a lot of <laughs> because League he's of the Legends. last star fucking fighter. <laughs> Yeah, so Naomi's dad played a lot of fucking Diablo or EverQuest or so he's just like point and clicking everywhere. Yeah, 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 because he's fucking Ender's Game. Yeah, so strategy games specifically. So that would have to yeah, be so like he's big Age, Age of Empires, Empires or Warcraft or something. So what conquer? What yeah. matters is they uh, they you know. They open a portal. They, uh, you know, and then the rest is history. You know, she tried to, sure. she tried to take Naomi and leave because like dad died. Who and... opened the portal? How they? Make oh, Akira. Akira. Oh, Akira. She found a, Wait, a portal to a world where died? none of this horrible stuff happened. Yes. He died in this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he didn't make just it. Just like, or maybe not. Just like uh, D's wife died oh, in yeah, their thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they lost each other's respective person. So, uh, you know, she's like, you're and, great. Uh, and Greg is just Greg. And Greg's Iranian though. He's still, he's still cool. He's still got a spaceship. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Naomi's powers are activated after she hears this like whole context from mom, which her parents don't hear. They just see her like just, get, just zoning out. <laughs> and then they're like, what's going on? And her mom, of course, is like a fucking coiled spring. is like, what's going on? You're gonna talk to us. And she's like, oh, and then she powers up and then like just leaves. She just fucks off. Yeah, she's like, I gotta leave. I gotta go. I got, I got powers and shit now. I don't need you fuckers anymore. <laughs> I'm special now. No, so she goes honey, to- Honey, I'm special too, can I come with? <laughs> sure, you can come, because you're special, but mom, get fucked. <laughs> so instead, you know, she, she goes to, we cut back to Annabelle, and uh, you know, they're hanging out, and she's like- So that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, and she's like, do you fly? She's like, oh man, I don't know. Did I fly here, or did I teleport? I don't How know. How the fuck did I even get and here? And then a portal opens up, and Zumbado comes out, and he's oh. like, do their things go off? He like, was drawn by her using her powers yeah, or whatever, that's right? that's it, yeah. yeah. Her powers activated- There's no and, other explanation that would make any sense. If it was a coincidence, that'd yeah. be- that, if, if, if it was if, if, if there was a coincidence, it would be consistent with this book. <laughs> so 17 years, Zumbada's finally like, there! Finally, yes. I can find her. She turned yeah. it on. I've been yeah. sitting in my den just like reading. Waiting? <laughs> yeah, no, because he's like, it's been 17 years. Like he's taking a dump or he's like eating a chicken or something <laughs> like that. He's like, oh shit! <laughs> D d no. Oh, I gotta put my costume back on. Oh, oh I've really gained a lot of weight. Yeah, oh no. Well, she won't know. So he goes to the portal and he's like, "All right, I've been waiting for you for a long time. Let's go." So meanwhile, you know, uh, D's thing goes off and he's like, "Oh, I guess I'll go." So then he puts on an outfit that he's never worn before, which is like vaguely Thanagarian, and he gets on his chopper and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna." <laughs> it's kick more some... Owl Man than anything else. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, "I'm gonna kick some fucking ass because I haven't done shit in this book." So. Uh, you know. Why is he gonna kick ass? What does he care? Uh, right? Why didn't he put on that armor when he answered the thing the first time? Right. Everyone convenes. Dee's there. Annabelle's there. Uh, Naomi's parents are there. You know, and, and Annabelle's like, a, a door opened, a big, scary, obvious villain came out. He told uh, Naomi some vague bullshit, and then uh, they both went through the portal. Like, literally, he's like, oh. you've gotta come here. This is your birth world. She's like, it's my birth world? Later! And then just goes She through. goes? Yeah, immediately. And then the portal closes because it's a convenience portal. Funny thing is that he didn't lie. No, he didn't. So well, he could have closed the portal because he went back to the other side. Exactly. So or like, the bad guy went through back through the portal and it closed. Yeah. That's or one that's or how the we're other. Triggered. triggered by bad guys going through portals. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, she's gone. She went through a portal. She's not even on this planet anymore. Oh my god. And so uh, Dee's like, I guess we could call like Star Labs or something. I don't know. And. Freaking Greg's like, I'd call Adam Strange, which like if you read Strange Adventures, like I wouldn't. Technically they... she's not even in this universe. No, right. She's right. in a fucking other reality. Wait. That's gonna be pretty hard to get. How to. did 
That means D and Greg they're from are still this, from our multiverse. They're from yeah. our Earth. Yeah, this yes. has nothing to do with them. Why no. would their thing go off <laughs> well, well, it's from just, a multiversal well, portal? That's a good question. Because it's a huge amount of energy. It's, a lot, it's, it's, a, it's an energy we've never seen before. Yeah. They, they do establish that later in another book that Bennett's wrote, where mm -hmm. they say, like, your energy is off the charts. But also, uh, Batman calls her an alpha level superpowered being, and then later someone else calls her an omega level. So, like, <laughs> Bennett doesn't fucking know the difference. I don't know, some, some, some super, You're still no super, super powerful. Nobody fucking had his yeah. So uh, they arrive and the world's destroyed and he's just like, yeah, this place is fucked up. There was a huge war, I'm Zimbato. And uh, you Isn't know. Isn't this guy cool? Right, look at, like look at it's so green this, shit. Yeah, this used to be Earth, but now it's fucked. And I used to be a person, but like the wars made me look like a crazy, vague monster that isn't quite defined yet because I don't know what he's going to look like in the show. He looks like a cat monster. He, he, he looks to, like a Cthulhu. He, he looks like, he oh. used to look like a fucking dude. He does have tentacles, so like maybe he's a Cthulhu. But in any yeah. case, he's got like cuttlefish eyes <laughs> too. Yeah, she's just, I, 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 she knows who Zimbato is because she got the context yeah. hologram, but he doesn't know that she got the hologram. So Wait, he's just like, she knows oh, he's, he's bad. Like, Why did she go with him if she knows he's well, bad? Because she wants to see she her. She needs to know. She's yeah. got to know. The, she's got to close the circle. Figure out all these uh, all I'll these, be these fine. mysteries. Yeah, I'm, 16 I'm a teenager. Or whatever. Yeah. I'm special. She's I won't 17. Die. We know that. Oh, right. I didn't special. know. That. She's 17. So, you know, they're uh, so they're talking about like you know because he thinks he's gonna like manipulate her and she's I guess playing a game. Right. With he's him. gonna turn her to the dark side. Right. She's she like, no, he's evil. And she already knows he's evil yeah. and like murdered her parents. So she's like, yeah, whatever. She's like, what? So he's like, you gotta activate your powers and how it feels. It feels great. Watch. She's like, you gotta, you gotta be a badass. Like, you know what feels good about Rick, you know, unleashing hell on your powers? Just watch me break this shit. Wasn't that cool? Now you break some shit. And so she powers up and she's like, you killed my parents. He's oh. like, oh, you knew that already. Oops. You didn't go through the portal with like a black box, did you? And then you touched that? Yeah. That'd be really bad for me. Except like he wouldn't even know that they, she made a black box call. But in any case. She really should have played along for longer. Yeah. Because she doesn't know how to use it. Yeah, but powers. the book only has like three pages left. Right. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't abide a seventh issue. Ethan, so, she can't kill him. How will she have a mortal enemy for life? Yeah, that's right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, no, I'm saying she shouldn't have because like he, she's not going to be able to win. Right. <laughs> so right. like she should have just kept yeah. dragging it out well, until someone info. came to rescue her. Yeah, that's true. And getting more info. So Do you think just, she's gonna beat this fucking guy? No, she just punches him. So she, she's just mad. She can't she, control it. She's she so tries mad. to punch him and like break something else, and he's like, "Yeah, oh shit! Like, don't get mad at me. Ooh. Your dad's the reason that like you're like this. Your parents oh. are like this because like they, you know, I didn't know where they sent you or why, but now that I know that like there's a whole other Earth." That could, that's unspoiled by my powers. Oh, like, I'm gonna go fuck it up. That's right. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kill your new parents. Oh my god, I'd love it if he showed back up mm -hmm. and she's like, hi, I'd like you to meet Superman. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. And I'm sure it'll happen at some point, but like Naomi has to be the hero of her own journey, so like I'm sure they won't do that. But Bennis has created at least two other characters who look who have the same build as Zumbado who want to come to this earth to destroy it because it would make someone who lives there really mad. And I'm like, that you're three for three <laughs> on totally unoriginal characters that yeah. nobody cares about and has no footing to understand or enjoy. Yeah. But in any case, so he's just like, yeah, I'm gonna come to your earth and I'm gonna fuck it up. And then Akira shows up and she's like, hey, I saved you last time. Never come back here. This place is off limits. Your parents don't want you here, didn't want you here. How are you alive? Right. Uh, fuck you, I, because- Because I'm super strong. Because somebody needed to open the portal and I don't want portal opening to be one of Naomi's powers. So get the fuck out of here. You look just like your mom, I love you, bye. Ugh. So she pushed her through the portal and uh, Zimbato tries to go through it and get her. And then Naomi triumphantly punches Zimbato and knocks him back through the portal, which closes the portal. <laughs> and then he doesn't open it again because like I guess Akira didn't open it for him. And then that's that. And everyone is standing around like, whoa, that's crazy. I can't believe that just happened. And then uh, she activates her powers again and flies up at the sky like Neo at the end of the Matrix. And they're like, <laughs> you're amazing, Naomi. You're gonna do amazing things. Your show is gonna be really cool. People are really gonna like your show, Naomi. I hope, I hope this is worth it. Bye. Thanks, Rick. Where and does then, she go? <laughs> she goes immediately to Metropolis oh, uh, in man. Action Comics number 1015. And uh, Superman's like, hi, you broke my, my favorite hot dog cart. And then he takes her to Star Labs and they check her out and then she helps Superman in a fight. I'd love it if they, she goes back and they're like, oh, this is the thing we saw like a long time ago. We still have no idea where it's from. Yeah. Or anything about it. No, they, and they don't, they have no idea. Uh, they, they check her out, they have no idea where the energy signature is from. 
And then uh, she joins the the Young Justice because Bendis is writing that. Can't she say, I'm from a different Earth? Oh, she does. She tells them. And they're like, yeah, show us on the map where you came from. And they're like, I don't know what that means. It's not like the, the, the Earth has a number on it. <laughs> she can't, like, sense on the map? Like, where? No. Like a Ouija board. board. Yeah. Right? That'd be great. But they didn't even what? bother. Why would, why would they think that someone from an alternate universe who was brought here by a portal... Who was raised who here. Who was raised here would have the ability to pick out on their multiverse map that they made here <laughs> that has, like, human symbols and letters and shit on it. Right. Would be able to, like, identify which one of those little fucking circles that she came from. I don't know. I figured your black box told you. I, I, I think they just wanted to... I, I, so fucking weird. I, I don't know. I think they just wanted to show that the multiverse map is for sale at the Justice League. <laughs> or the Hall of Justice. I, we, don't, we still don't they'd have be one, like, They'd the be, like, going to, like... Why would you want one? I want one in the office. I want to be able to look at it <laughs> yeah. and be like, <laughs> this yeah, makes me angry. Fucking thing. <laughs> I have an onslaught post. Especially if you flip it over and it's black. <laughs> oh. The best thing I can say about it, and, it, and it's not like begrudging in any way, is the art is stellar. It's next level shit. And if you want to see more of this, read Far Sector. Because that has stuff happening in it, and it looks great. Because it's drawn by Jamal Campbell. But, uh, you know, it, it's interesting to see Bendis and Walker working together. Because you get like... Something else, it, it, it's not, I don't, I don't know. I feel bad because David Walker is kind of like thrown under the bus for this. Like it's, it's all the all the blame and all the like attention is given to Bendis for this, but like Walker is 50% of this book. I don't know which half. <laughs> uh, also, uh, they, they reveal at the end of the book that her last name is McDuffie, which is a uh, homage to Dwayne McDuffie, who was a prominent black comic book creator who, uh, worked on and cultivated everything you like about the Milestone universe. It's like, oh, it's like Superman. Yeah, r right up until the end. And then it's like, not at all. Well, no. Because, because this is somebody be like who's like intrinsically fresh. like connected to the ongoing like shit that's happening where she came from. Yeah. It'd be like if Superman like came of age and then someone from Krypton was like, ah! You mean like Rogelzar? Well, you mean, now, like, Bendis literally yeah, doing that I know, too? but like in history, yeah. in Superman's history of like the comics, right. that didn't happen. No, he was a human character. He was a he was raised on Earth and had Earth adventures. Yes, she's having she so, I mean, she just got her powers. And she's adventures. traveling through multiple dimensions. That's it's very hard to like ground yourself. Yeah, and ground the character and uh, find her relatable. Or like care. Yeah. So I'm like, well, what's she gonna happen next? Is she gonna fucking fight Lex Luthor? Is she gonna, is she gonna right? stop a bank robbery? Is like, she gonna blow up the planet and like <laughs> we're gonna start over again? Is she gonna start the next crisis? Like, is she gonna fight Brainiac? Like, how did the entire town get roped into lying about her origin? They didn't know. They literally didn't know. They they just, yeah. Well, yeah. What was? Did they not remember? Or what they was the did... super? What was the super event that happened 17 years ago when Naomi arrived? Probably that like interdimensional or in multiversal rift that opened up. But even that, but nobody like, knew about. Nobody that. knew that happened. Nobody knew that happened. So why would there be a, like a, a rumor, rumor about it? Right. Now who started that rumor? I'm maybe in volume two. Maybe it was just D. I mean, Ben is just telling people about it. Right. No. Uh, well, he is pretty stupid and says stuff like unprovoked. So maybe. Or uh, Bendis has I mean, had that's when he came. You know, he's, they've had three years to come up with, to, to look at all the holes poked in this book. Like, so oh, yeah, we to be like, explain. oh, no, when that happened, like, a character was, like, in the background. Like, ooh, and then they started the rumor. Or yeah. told people, told anybody they could, they, they would believe them. Or maybe maybe there was a, a loud noise. Yeah, I'm sure there was a loud noise. It was a there was practically a, a, a war happening on the yeah. high school football field. I'd love it if, like, he... If Superman and Naomi kind of got along, they do. Like, we are. Yeah, we're you similar. Know. We're similar. Oh, yeah, no, and she's just like, yeah, but I'm an I'm an Earthling. But I'm more. But I'm more special. Yeah, but I'm actually from Earth. Like I'm not an alien like you. <laughs> I'm not an alien. Gross. <laughs> they have an interaction where uh, you know he he says like I'm adopted too, and she's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then Batman's yeah. like, my parents are murder too. <laughs> so you're also like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to put on this Robin costume? And it's actually like really weird because there's a moment in that book where like, because Naomi's like, woo, everything's Batman, get the hell out of here. Yeah, I, I, it's not that. It's funny because like he goes, yeah, my parents are murdered. And she's like, does it ever get better? And he goes, no. And she goes, good. And I'm like, that's not your character. You know good. What, like, you, what? There's nothing in any of your appearances that suggests that you acted like that. <laughs> except, for, except for the seventh issue she appears in, which is that one. Right. But even that, I'm like, what? I don't buy that. Well, she's, she's like, she's figuring out who she is. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, oh, that'd be great. It turns out I'm fucking dark. She, like, spray paints her outfit. She's like, now I'm dark. And then, like, six months later, she feels like an asshole. She has to, like, clean it all off. <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, I just really thought that, like, Superman was going to come back. Yeah, no. At the end, like, right. bookended. Or, no. like, 
or 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 Mongol, right? Or something something from that fight no. would, would turn out to no, like it's matter. Just random. Sometimes things just happen, and doesn't matter at all. Sometimes things are just random, but you're still special. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just wanted to remind you, in case you didn't get it, that this is a Superman story or well, he's in story. It. Like it's you know it's, yeah you know like you, you could have done this whole story without Superman at all. That's right. He didn't. That's need why to I'm be saying there. like you could make this from any publisher. This could have been, this could have been in Marvel, and it was a Spider-Man fight. Thematically, it's Superman because it. Her story mirrors his story, yes. so it had to be Superman. Except that you didn't do anything with the fact that Superman's physically there. No, no, he's he's like a visual cue that we're doing something similar to yeah. the origin. Well, yeah, it's like if you didn't get it, right? Like if you didn't get from like the plot that is exactly like his origin. Here's a picture of him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's also physically there. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. That's yeah. Right. I know. I know. I don't trust that you're not I a moron. I'm making there. a CW show. Yeah, and it's not even that she's just a <laughs> Superman fan and references him. Yeah. It's not even that he's just there at the that, beginning. Man. It's that they cut back to him and what he's doing like multiple times in the first couple of issues. Yes. I get it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, don't do that if you're not going to yeah, bed like you, keep bringing him you up. You get it, but like maybe the kids won't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. See you next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>